The Girl Who Drew Butterflies, How Maria Miriam's Art Changed Science. This is by Joyce Sidman. It's a beautifully illustrated book. You can see the end papers. These are illustrations that are reproductions of Maria Miriam's art, actually. She was born in 1647 in Germany and so throughout this uh, biography there are uh, lots of lithographs and so on there's a glossary right at the beginning I think this is an important place to have it because there's so much about butterflies and moths and their various stages in this book and photographs old maps so you really get a feel for the place where this remarkable woman grew up and there are many sidebars for example it's explaining how copper engraving worked um, her father was Matthias Marian who was a copper engraver and uh, at that time in Europe, people thought that flying insects uh, sort of were generated spontaneously from either dead animals or from the mud, and that was based on something that Aristotle said um, 2,000 years earlier. However, Maria, oh, here's one of her early um, sketches. There's information about artist materials. Uh, her stepfather was a painter. And her, there's a portrait of her older sister. So as I was saying, um, so her stepfather was a painter and one of her jobs was to bring in flowers from the garden for him to paint still lives and so on and she always paid attention to the insects that were on these plants and she was so curious and she um, you know she had this almost a scientific mind already uh, there wasn't even the word entomologist at that time but she was really interested in insects um, an interest that was quite suspect during this time of witchcraft uh, trials um, but her first major study was done of silkworms they were the most acceptable insect and there's an engraving that she did of all the um, the different life stages of a silkworm and through that she was able to prove that insects don't generate spontaneously they start out as an egg and go through various larva stages until they pupate and then emerge as an adult. Um, one of the great things about this book is all of the, like I said, many illustrations to give you a sense of place and many reproductions of Maria's art. Um, and these sidebars, for example, this one's about the witch hunts. There are many um, excerpts from Maria's writings um, translated to English. So she um, left a lot of records behind. More of her engravings. Her very first published book was um, all about caterpillars, and this is the frontispiece for it. There's a watercolor uh, plate. Um, study for that book. There's another one of her engravings. Isn't that gorgeous with the dandelion? And then also showing the life cycle of, what is it, a tussock moth. She married at 18. Um, she married an artist who was an apprentice in, in her stepfather's studio um, but things didn't go well she ended up 
moving to a religious community in the Netherlands and then divorcing her husband. And uh, she and her two daughters moved to, moved to Amsterdam and um, made a life there as artists, really. Uh, here's um, a little bit about how curiosity cabinets were the first museums. And Maria and her daughters painted um, uh, artworks that were included in sort of curiosity cabinet uh, works of art. And the first uh, art museums were composed of that. She traveled to Suriname. This one shows her voyage from Amsterdam to Suriname, which had a Dutch colony. And so she was the first person to record many of the plants and insects and reptiles from that part of the world. They didn't have photography then, so it all had to be done with um, drawing and painting. There's another sidebar, this time about um, slavery and sugar plantations. There were many uh, insects that just amazed everybody. Like this moth has an 11 inch wingspan. It's the white witch moth. So that was Maria's um, painting of it. And she always included whatever plant she would find that they ate. So it was really important scientific information that things are all interrelated. An apple, cockroach. And she made a beautiful book of her um, Suriname drawings or lithographs, and some of them were hand colored. There's the banana flower. And her image, her portrait, was on the German 500 Deutschmark bill. A truly amazing, amazing woman. It's a timeline. So this book, it's probably um, the main audience would be children in middle school, so grades five to eight, but I recommend it to anybody who is interested in, um, in art, in insects, in um, remarkable women from history. Uh, yeah, I love this book. <laughs>